Hello Organicers, it's time for our second wet lab of the uh, term. We're going to be talking about boiling points. Uh, once again, we're going to be lear learning a microscale technique for determining boiling point. Just like with melting points, it's really helpful to identify a compound uh, with boiling points. Also an assessment of purity, although the kind of the, the trend in assessing that purity is a little bit more complicated, uh, which we'll get into in just a second. Um, so first of all, just like always, we'll start off with kind of the purpose for the lab, which I'll write down behind me here. Uh, we'll go into some kind of real brief theory behind some of the laboratory techniques you're going to see. Then I'll show you the laboratory techniques and how I've collected at least one of these uh, samples, and then I'll give you uh, the rest of the data. Okay, so our purpose today is we're going to learn how to record a boiling point via microscale technique. I'll be honest, there's a couple of different microscale techniques. We're going to be uh, using a particular one. Um, obviously, this is one you use where uh, your compound of interest is uh, liquid. Um, and then, of course, the melting point is what you use with uh, compound of interest is a solid. Um, the one that we're going to use, though, is probably the most common way of going about it. A lot of the other techniques require some uh, specialized equipment. Um, there's kind of an even more special technique used with like millimoles of uh, liquid uh, that uh, is something that we're not going to cover, but it's good to know that it even exists. Okay, believe it or not, that's not a duck. That's actually a beaker hand-drawn by yours truly. Uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about what boiling is, or it should be kind of a review of what boiling is. And then uh, I'll show you kind of a, another really bad uh, artist's impression of our setup today. Um, and I'll kind of zoom in on it and show you exactly how some of the forces we're about to talk about uh, are going to occur. So, first of all, I've got obviously a liquid, and I've represented the liquid as these like little particles. Keep in mind, you can uh, understand all matter by imagining, or I guess it is, it's not just imagining it, they're all made up of these little particles. They're constantly moving around depending on your phase. Um, in the liquid phase, they're translocating, and uh, there's all these different kind of intermolecular attractions between them, right? So they're actually forces holding these things together. And uh, if you need a review of any of that, um, I have a lot of good resources. But I always think about uh, intermolecular forces as kind of the, the glue that holds uh, different pieces of matter together, right? And so what we have, though, is to keep in mind that there's all of this air pressure on us, right? The weight of the air is kind of, uh, you know, keeping us down, man. So you have this big giant pressure, which is called atmospheric pressure, kind of exerting itself against this liquid. Right? And so this is the pressure of the atmosphere. And normally above any liquid, there's a certain amount of what's called vapor pressure. In other words, there's a certain amount of, of these particles that just kind of escape from the surface, right? And kind of, you know, if, if this was an open container, it would certainly evaporate out. And then eventually over time, it would all evaporate and there wouldn't be any liquid there anymore. Um, so that those little particles that exert... Let's say that there's a particle that just kind of escaped from the surface of the medium. As that thing is bouncing around, it's creating pressure, right? And that's called pressure, or so that's called vapor pressure, or uh, uh, PVAP, right? P sub VAP. And so boiling point is truly where you've kind of added enough energy to the system where you've broken, a, broken apart enough of these um, intermolecular forces where the pressure of that vapor is actually enough to match the pressure of the atmosphere, right? And so we usually think about uh, boiling point in terms of a temperature, and that's actually what it is, right? Of where something is boiling, right? So boiling point is just the, the temperature where the pressure of that vapor equals atmospheric pressure. And of course, you see all these little gas particles trying to escape their way out of here. Um, and so we're going to take uh, advantage of that in the, the really brilliant setup that we have here. Um, and so that'll be kind of the next series of slides. The setup we're going to have in this lab is going to involve putting a thermometer right next to a teeny tiny test tube. And we're going to submerge that whole entire assemblage there into uh, some sort of uh, liquid that we can heat. In our case, it's going to be water, so obviously our setup is uh, pretty limited in terms of the temperatures that we can achieve. 
Um, if you wanted to go higher than, you know, let's say 110 degrees Celsius, you'd use oil. Um, but there are problems with using oil. Of course, you know, it's generally very flammable. So if like uh, a, a new student kind of splatters something onto a hot plate and catch on fire, things like that. Um, and it's also like, it makes everything super nasty. So we're just going to use water and we're going to make sure that we choose compounds that are, uh, that boil less than 100 degrees. So anyway, this is just the bath that we're going to submerge our liquid in. The way that we're going to do this experiment is we're going to put a little bit of, uh, let's see, I'll try to use green here. So we're going to put a little bit of some unknown liquid into this test tube, right? I'm not sure if how well you guys can see this. And the other thing which we're going to do is, which is pretty brilliant, is we're going to invert one of those uh, capillary tubes, uh, kind of similar to the ones that we used in the, the melting point lab. We're going to invert it so the open end is pointed down. So here's this little tiny thin capillary where the open end is submerged in our liquid. And what we're going to do is this is going to be on a hot plate. And so we're going to start to, to heat this thing up. And the idea of that is we're going to heat this sucker up until whatever amount of liquid kind of went into the capillary tube all gets forced out along with whatever, um, you know, air is going to be in there. We're essentially just going to heat this sucker up until we um, boil enough of this liquid that all of the vapor in that particular um, test tube, I'm sorry, that particular capillary is just completely saturated with vapor of whatever the compound of interest is that we're testing. And so you'd say like, well that, you know, you didn't say anything about temperature. Well that's because you're actually going to go higher than the boiling point of that particular thing, right? And obviously I don't know what it is just yet. <clears throat> but what we're going to depend on is this thing, once it's past its boiling point and we get a bunch of bubbles, we're going to kind of stop it before it's completely gone, right? So we should see a, a little bit of liquid left in the bottom of this uh, capillary tube. And then we're going to stop heating it. And we're actually going to take it out of the, the hot bath. Um, sometimes uh, it, it gets a little squirrely. Sometimes you actually have to keep it in the hot bath um, in order for it to cool slowly enough. But I'm going to really try to just kind of uh, get this process going here a little bit more quickly. And once this thing is kind of out of its hot bath, obviously it's going to cool down. And if I just kind of zoom in on what's going on right here, in the next, uh, I always call them slides, I guess they're video segments, uh, whatever. Um, I'll show you kind of what we're waiting for. Okay, this is drawn not at all to scale here, but what we have is kind of a cross section, right? I kind of like cut through this whole assembly. We've got our uh, liquid that is, is just stopped boiling. We've got this capillary tube that's filled with uh, only the vapor from whatever gas that this green liquid produced here. And what we're waiting for is that perfect point where there's a perfect balance between the pressure coming from the atmosphere on the top of this thing. We're waiting for that pressure to be enough that the liquid actually goes back into the capillary tube, right? And so what we're looking for is literally that liquid, the point at which it enters this test tube and goes back up. The reason that's happening is because that really high, uh, high pressure in there that right now is, um, you know, it's hot enough that that vapor is actually higher than the pressure of the atmosphere since, you know, that's why it's empty. And then once we get to what's called the boiling point, right? It's the same in the forward and the reverse direction. We're looking at it as it cools, right? We're looking at it in the reverse direction. That's going to be where the pressure of the atmosphere is perfectly equal to the pressure of that vapor, right? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that green liquid when it first enters um, that um, little capillary. So other kind of theory type of ideas that we should be considering here. First of all, um, we know that there's a certain amount of atmospheric pressure, right? We talked about that um, just a couple of seconds ago here. Uh, you have to also consider that the pressure of the atmosphere isn't just a constant thing, right? Um, it is constantly changing due to weather uh, patterns and such. 
Um, it also, of course, is a function of elevation, right? If we went to the uh, top of Mount Hood, for instance, we'd find that um, if we did this experiment on the top of Mount Hood, which would involve us getting out of our houses and into the outdoors, which would be nice, um, uh, we would notice that the, the pressure of the atmosphere was pretty low, so everything would tend to, you know, in our experiment, would boil a little bit, um, a little bit easier at a lower temperature. Um, obviously, if we went into the, like the bottom of Death Valley, there's a little bit more air pressure there, um, so things would require a little bit more oomph to, to actually boil. So I will report to you the atmospheric pressure as I recorded it here um, as kind of part of your data set. Um, and uh, another thing which we should talk about is if this thing is impure, right? Back when we talked about melting points, it was pretty straightforward, right? If you mix two solids together, usually you end up with lowering the melting point and you also end up with a wider uh, range. It's a little bit more complicated, um, and you might remember this from Gen Chem in the case of boiling. Uh, it turns out if it's an insoluble, uh, or sorry, if it's, a, if it's a high boiling point impurity, right? Um, what typically is said is that the boiling point will go up, right? So it's always the freezing point lowering and the boiling point elevation. You may remember that. Um, but if it's not just uh, in a, a high boiling impurity, if it's actually a, a liquid that matches the um, kind of the, the vapor pressures achievable by our liquid, then things get a little bit more complicated. And that's where our, uh, our I guess, our third uh, lab uh, what third wet lab will actually kind of talk about what you do in those cases, um, and that's where we'll talk a little bit about distillation and how that works. Um, so it's a little bit more complicated uh, than the melting point case um, in terms of assessing purity. Um, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind as I kind of show you how to do some of these techniques. So there is our setup. This is a teeny tiny, I'll put my finger in there just so you can see how teeny tiny this little test tube is. Right? There's the test tube that's going to be holding our uh, liquid of interest. This little thing right here, that's the inverted capillary tube right there. And so what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, a little bit of liquid and partially fill this test tube. And then we're going to use this uh, hot bath in order to heat it up. As I said, this is the part where um, normally what you would use is this kind of assembly right here. So if we were going to heat this thing in oil, we would use this thing and you'd fill it with some sort of high boiling point um, mineral oil and that little D tube over here, right? That thing is actually going to create like a convection current. So this is kind of the, the more fancy way of doing it, but we don't want to splash around in oil. So instead, we're just going to uh, kind of do it a little bit more straightforward. And of course, I have this thing connected to uh, a thermometer, which I conveniently can't read, um, but I'll turn that sucker around before I do anything. And uh, let's see what we can see. We're going to be using a little bit of pentane here. And I'm going to use, uh, ooh, where would it go? There it is, <laughs> this pipette to just put a little bit of liquid into our uh, little test tube here. We're heating the little test tube assembly. And you might be able to start to see just little bubbles coming out of that thing as the vapor inside of there is starting to get um, to expand and get pushed out. So you can start to see a little bit more bubbles. Pentane is a really, really low boiling uh, compound. So it's not boiling yet, but it's only 35 degrees. And you can already see that we're getting pretty close. So we'll heat past the boiling point and then we'll watch it slowly cool this out and see what happens when it cools. You can just start to see the pentane getting sucked up in there. It actually cooled pretty fast. So if I really cared about this, um, I'll try to do it a little more carefully the next couple of times. If I really cared about this, I definitely would have slowed down the cooling. You can see how quickly this thing cools. But as it's cooling, there's a little bit more of a vacuum produced in that uh, single end sealed tube. You can see it even go farther and farther up the tube as we wait here. 
tell me that's not exciting. 